on this episode of Code Two Zero. Flipped over up against an apartment building and caught fire. Alrighty, today's a new day. We have a little bit of clarity on uh, everything that was covered last night. So I kind of want to just do a quick recap. Um, the female, let's start with the ones that we saw directly. The woman that was taken into custody that I guess stole a drink from the 7-Eleven right after lighting all those fires was confirmed today by LAFD and LAPD. Obviously arson, I'm sure, had a part in that. Is confirmed. Okay. Um, she is confirmed to be the suspect in question relating to those incidents. So the house fire that we went to, there was also a commercial fire, and then all of those trash cans that she lit, I mean, it was a handful, probably probably a dozen or more trash cans that were lit. That's all gonna be uh, one and the same person. So that female was the suspect, so that is confirmed. Um, secondly, there's a little bit information on this. I know there's more uh, more to it, but the, um, the crash that Gabriel was on, on PCH, he covered, I don't know if we, did we talk about that last night or no? No. So Gabriel covered a crash on PCH last night with a vehicle that was possibly street racing that lost control and uh, flipped into uh, four uh, young adults uh, killing them uh, who happened to be standing on the side of PCH. So that was, uh, I believe it was four, three or four that were killed uh, tragically. That is uh, a story that uh, Gabriel went out to Malibu to cover. So if we didn't talk about or show that last night, I know the PIO talked with Gabriel out there from, I think it was LA County Fire. And uh, obviously there's more information now, but uh, Alex, you know what, if we didn't talk about it, roll that real quick and let's uh, let's see, um, let's kind of see what was said at that point at that incident. So we had a traffic accident here on Pacific Coast Highway. It happened around 8.30 this evening. And unfortunately, aftermath has shown that we've got for DOA on scene. We did have two other victims that had minor injuries and they chose not to get transported. So right now, everything's still under investigation. LA County Sheriff is on scene and they're gonna re-piece this accident and put everything together to figure out what actually happened. So know that until early morning hours probably, PCH in this stretch is gonna be shut down. It does look like there was some sort of speed involved just due to the nature and the impact of the vehicles and the parked cars that were hit as well. So again, LA County Sheriff's probably do a great job at uh, piecing this together. So that was the update from the Malibu incident that Gabriel was on. Uh, you guys just got the update on the arson fire that we covered. And then the last, uh, last story would be the gentleman that was uh, shot in the face in Hollywood. I actually haven't seen any updates on that. I've seen no updates on that story today so far. I'll dig a little bit more into it and we'll check on what his condition ended up being and, and uh, we'll see if there was any more info on that story. But as of right now, nothing nothing quite yet. But super busy night last night. I think we, we had less than, uh, I mean, it was very fast between incidents. It was like call to call to call to call. So that doesn't always happen. That doesn't always happen, but um, it's been really, really busy lately. So we're gonna try to keep up on all these stories. And again, like I always say, this is you're, you guys are seeing a behind the scenes look at news gathering in a big city in, in a top one, two market here in the US. So things are very fluid. All the information coming in is either speculatory or of course, preliminary information based on what we're seeing firsthand and what we're hearing here on the radios. So of course, within that first 24, we gather a ton more information. If you're curious to know about the rest of the story, um, 
and, and get that full picture, uh, you know, information that you're looking for, you can go to keynews.tv under publications. You can see all of the final, uh, final data that we do uh, get with our editor, of course, on these incidents. So I'll leave it at that for now. We're going to go over stage up, and uh, if anything pops off, we will, uh, of course, take you with us. We'll be uh, we'll pick up when we're en route to the next one. Damn, they're going to town on the middle, huh? Looks like they're uh, sandblasting the center divider. Um, it's kind of cool. So we're right now heading to a vehicle versus pedestrian call. It's going to be on Cahuenga at Hill Park, so just north of the Hollywood Bowl, if you're familiar with the area, but just south of Mulholland, so kind of in that in that little bit of a limbo area. We just passed the fire station, so um, they will most likely beat us on this. I don't think PD will, but the yeah, the fire department definitely will. We, their stations right here off the off the 101. Um, we just, like I said, we just passed it. So we're gonna check this out. I don't know. Okay, I don't know what the uh, what the situation is, what the conditions are. There's, I see flashing red lights as we go under us. The thing that I do know, however, is that this is a very, um, very high speed part of Coenga Boulevard, firstly, and secondly, it is, um, it is an area that is very dark as well. This is an extremely underlit, <laughs> not, not well lit area. So um, we, are going to see if we can get into a position here, because I think it is right here. Um, we're gonna come up here and see what's going on. But yeah, the lighting isn't too good. Uh, I think there are some lights where FD is stopped underneath the freeway, but for the most part, it's, it's not great. So I do see a car stopped in the middle, blocking traffic. I don't know if they're involved. And I do see fire department, there's a person walking they are oh there's a bicyclist down ah that's that's a shame well we'll shoot it um just because uh bicycle i mean you can see look how dark this is without our headlights i mean there you go there's an example of what how how unbelievably dark it is over here so we will uh we'll jump out we'll take a look at this guy this might be a hit and run i don't see a car anywhere so um really uh oh this poor guy he uh you see his leg shaking, that's terrible. Poor dude. Forty five is gonna be code six on the auto bike. It looks like a, it might be a hit and run, I'll be out. Um, Gabe is also downtown on another call, but we'll, we'll talk about that once we finish up with this. in front of the uh, fire truck but I don't know if that's the person who called 911 or that's uh, or that's the person that that hit this individual but we'll we'll find out I believe so. There was a car that stopped, but I think they were just a witness. Um, there's also a guy in a scooter, but yeah, there's no, there's no car. 
sadly enough. Is he alive? He he was moving, and I could hear him, so he's, he's alive currently. But yeah, it, and it's so dark here. You guys know. I mean, when I heard where it was, I, I go, it's so dark, it wouldn't surprise me at all. So Yeah, but yeah, no car. So I assume it's a hidden run, or maybe it was a truck they didn't notice, you know? So... So let's grab, uh, we're gonna grab some shots of the bike and everything. He was, uh, uh, he looked conscious, but he had a major head wound. So those can go either way. Either he'll be okay and he'll pull through or not. And um, we never, that, that one officer, that, that sergeant that told us, hey, I'm not a doctor, I don't know. I mean, that's, that's exactly, uh, exactly right. We don't know this could go either way. We've had times where people are in the ambulance sitting up talking to the firefighters and we find out later they end up passing away. So. Um, you never try to, to guesstimate too much. I would say for this gentleman, um, I would say serious condition would be my kind of just broad term for this, um, for reporting uh, as far as the information is concerned, but we don't know how this goes until they get to the hospital. But it does appear to be a hit and run. I don't see, uh, there was a car that we saw originally when we got here, but that car is subsequently left. Um, PD's gonna have to come out obviously. And then uh, that's pretty much it. We'll get some shots of the bike, um, get them pulling off. But as of right now, it, it looks like a hit and run. So we'll see what uh, we'll see what they say. While we're waiting to get more information, I had mentioned when we got here, Gabriel was on a call. Um, pretty, pretty wild story, actually. I don't have all of the details right now. I just know what we got preliminarily. We have a vehicle. It's downtown. I believe it's on Third Street. Um, there was a vehicle traveling at a high rate of speed, flipped over up against an apartment building and caught fire. The driver survived. They were transported uh, to a local area hospital, of course, but um, it's pretty incredible footage. So. Uh, let's, uh, Alex, if we could, let's roll Gabe's footage from tonight. Uh, downtown, the fiery crash up against the apartment building. Let's take a look. Back out here, we're still waiting on an update from LAPD. Uh, they haven't arrived yet. Presumably they will show up unless this guy just crashed his bike for all we know. But at, as of right now, the way the call came out, it was a vehicle versus a bicycle. Um, there were some tow truck guys that showed up with that information as well. That's why they, they showed up asking, you know, is there a car, which makes total sense. Um, but as of right now, there's no car, just the bicycle in the street. So we'll see. We'll see when they take him. Uh, when PD shows up, we'll, we'll ask a couple questions. Hopefully they, hopefully they give us the answers we're looking for. But as of right now, it looks like a hit and run. We just need to get it confirmed. All right, LAFD just took off. Um, we are clear. Captain spoke with us, gave us some information. It was a, uh, it is a vehicle versus bicyclist hit and run. Um, the okay. A uh, passing bus actually called it in. Um, but you can see, look, I'll turn all the lights off here. Look at this. Look, at this. obviously the street light, but the, the lights behind us and everything. Um, I mean, it's very. Uh, oh. 
Oh. Oh. He only stopped drinking and driving. Um, so, yeah, uh, bicyclist hit. They, uh, they actually put the bicycle on the engine, and they're going to take it, uh, I assume, to the station over there. I'm, I've never seen that before, so I thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah, they're like, hey, well, they're helping the guy out because they leave it out here. It gets stolen, so, you know. Um, spoke to the captain. He's in serious, obviously, but stable condition, so that's good to hear. I, I don't know the specific extent of the injuries um, because obviously that's not our, that is not really our business. Our business is just his condition and what's going on. But yes, it is a uh, hit and run versus a bicyclist, poor guy, and uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll get it in. But yeah, Gabe's uh, Gabe's thing is just nuts. Um, we also uh, went over uh, briefly to a call for a moment on, uh, oh gosh, where was it? It was on the 101 southbound. I can't even remember now. We've had so, so much stuff going on. Let me uh, take a look here. It was on the 101 in Woodland Hills, 101 southbound. Um, there was about, there are about, how many thousands of cars in traffic right now over there? There's gotta be a ton, right? So 101 southbound in Woodland Hills over at uh, Valley Circle is where it is. Uh, C, or LA County sheriffs were behind a, uh, a suspect wanted for ADW, which is assault with a deadly weapon. That suspect and his passenger are refusing to get out of the vehicle. They are stopped on the freeway southbound 101 at Valley Circle. They do not want to exit the vehicle. Sheriffs are there uh, trying to get them out of the vehicle, of course. Um, CHP is assisting by closing the entire freeway and that is uh that's what's clogging up the entire 101 right now they have the entire freeway closed because all the weapons are drawn uh down the freeway and they don't want people to get hurt so um that's what uh that's what's going on alex if you want to uh go over let's take a look at that um we have that from tonight as well the woodland hills adw suspect shut down 101 let's take a look So back here now, we're clearing off of that auto versus bicycle uh, call on Cahuenga that you guys just saw. But yeah, this whole situation, Woodland Hills, I, I haven't heard any updates. I'm not sure it's, if it's resolved itself. We'll take a look at the traffic map and see if it has. Um, but we, again, the, the want on those suspects was for uh, was for ADW. So and it sounded like what they were saying when we were there is it was against a uh, uh, either a sheriff's deputy or a police officer and that they were wanted for that. So that's a that's a whole nother ball game when you hear about uh, stuff like that so uh, again we'll, we'll leave it uh, with that information and we will be on to you guessed it the next one so uh, we are in the canyons. We're actually on Mount Baldy Road, and we are heading to a what looks like a small brush fire. We've got LA County responding. It's kind of on the border between LA and Riverside County. We've got a uh, squad in front of us that we're trying to catch up to just a little bit because I don't want to get too lost up here in the mountains, but we're going a pretty far ways up. We got a latitude and longitude pin that we've dropped on our map here, um, but it's, it's up in the hill. We'll see if we can if we can get eyes on it, I'm hoping that we can. Um, we have limited service, obviously, but we have uh, here, you can see on my screen, I don't know if you can see that. On my screen here, you can see that's a that's a, a mountain camera view of what we have. If I had to guess, just looking at that, it's probably a, probably a 60 by 100, maybe 150 spot. Um, and we do have them on county uh, six. So we are able to, hear what's going on. But we are heading up into the mountains. There's uh, there's county right in front of us, so we'll head up. Oh, one acre. Oh, and structure strike. Wow, okay. So that means there should be ground access to the uh, to the incident. But we'll head, uh, we'll head up here and see what we can see. Um, and it's, I think it might be ANF uh, is where we're heading also, so. We'll get up here and we'll get, uh, we'll see what we what we can find. But yeah, we're heading way up into the mountains. This is into the Santa Monica 
uh, San, uh, well, San Bernardino National Forest to the east, and this is part of the, uh, basically the mountains that are above Los Angeles. So Angeles National Forest, or Angeles National Forest, sorry, is what we're heading into. We're kind of on parallel with like Mount Wilson as far as, uh, as far as altitude, and we'll, uh, I'll give you guys an altitude update too when we get up here. We're at 2,700 feet right now, and we'll probably, probably be at about 4,000 by the time we get up there but yeah we're following them up into the canyons and they're saying now that their structures threatened and power lines down so we did have Santa Ana wind conditions earlier today um, we actually have some footage of what that looked like in San Bernardino which is in the foothills below us and to the east Alex if you want to roll that wind footage uh, from San Bernardino today uh, if you could we can kind of get an idea of what the Santa Ana wind conditions look like on the ground That's all ANF equipment. It sounds like they're canceling some equipment. Oh, okay. They're turning aircraft around, it sounds like. Okay. If, if it was one acre and it's in the bolt... Oh, they're calling a knockdown. Yeah, they either did a drop or they got hand lines around it really quick and got it out. I'm just not seeing... It's obviously really choppy. But it sounds like they're canceling additional equipment and it sounds like they've stopped forward progress. So, uh, how does that look out there with the helicopter? Brother? Can you see him or no? If you turn the ISO up, can you see him hovering around? Yeah. I'm just surprised I'm not hearing anything on air to ground and the tech and the uh, direct channels, the V V direct channels are uh, very quiet. But again, the winds down there are going to be a little bit less in the uh, in the ravine than they are up here on the peaks. But it's still. Again, the, the winds are why I was talking about it earlier before we got up in here. The winds are really the the main factor on uh, on fires that we have here in Southern California. The the wind just drives these things like you wouldn't believe. And however fast the wind is going, if we have 50, 60, sometimes even 70 mile an hour gusts, that's how fast the embers are going. And as that ember cast is landing down further, um, that that's oh wow that's starting other fires, other spot fires. And that's why um, I covered the Thomas fire back, uh, gosh, what year was that? Thomas fire was like 20... Like 2014 or something. 2014, yeah, it was a while ago. So um, back during the Thomas fire, at that point, that was the, uh, that was the, the biggest... Um, Okay, they're heading out. So the copters are leaving. Yeah, they released the copters. So that's a good sign. So we can we can clear off basically. But um, yeah, just to finish my point, the uh, the um, God, look at the sand. Do you see that? Sand was just flying. Um, 
the uh, the winds are really the the definitive factor on fires. The Thomas Fire, which again, I was at for uh, two or three days. I want to say on the Thomas Fire. Um, Actually, Alex, let me go into the archive and uh, I'm going to upload some of the footage that I had from the Thomas fire. Let's um, let's play back some of that and see what that type of situation looks like, just to see how crazy a wind-driven fire in Southern California can get. Alex, if you could, let's roll uh, roll some of the the highlights from the Thomas fire. Let's let's take a look at that. So that fire was, of course, wind-driven, also caused by uh, wind. They were uh, the final cause on that was uh, power lines that had fallen down um, in the area, uh, and that that was a huge problem unto itself. But yeah, anytime you have anytime you have high winds, um, power lines, and um, uh, dry brush, you're going to get those Santa Ana conditions uh, uh, cutting through the Southland, and that's when you get fires like that. The Thomas Fire, clearly an extreme example of what can happen, and, and up to that point, that was the largest fire in California state history. So seeing um, seeing that firsthand and covering that for, uh, for the news, both locally and nationally, was a uh, very trying uh, experience. Very, very stressful, uh, very fast paced and extremely dangerous. So uh, fires like that, they get out of hand super quick and you just have to, you have to really know where you need to be and where you shouldn't be. That's really the big thing. So this fire uh, that we just had here, one acre, sound, they're, they're sending the helicopters out of here and everything. So we're going to, we're going to let it go. Um, but for us, this, uh, you know, this is definitely, uh, this had the potential, uh, this absolutely had the potential to become a, uh, a serious incident. But luckily, we've got county, you've got Riverside uh, County, and uh, ANF out here, oh my goodness, off a little bit off-roading. Uh, you've got just an amazing group of guys up here that do a really, really great job. Yeah, I mean, you can see the amount of, of equipment that was up there at staging, and there's still more equipment coming. So even though that was one acre, they know just as well as we do um, that a fire like this can get out of hand instantly, especially with the winds. So, all right, they cleared the helicopters off and they're on standby. So something like this starting off as just an acre can turn into a campaign fire very, very quickly. So that's why we take it seriously and why we responded up here just to make sure. And if this did take off, then you guys would have a front row seat. So we are uh, coming into the Santa Ana's here. I'll talk a little bit. I don't want Tay to get uh, motion sick here as we're coming down off the canyon. I'll slow it down a little bit. But we are coming into the Santa Ana season as we uh, enter into the end of October, beginning of November. Uh, we do have a fire season that progresses all the way through the end of the year. Um, so we will definitely be at, I'm sure we'll be at some, uh, some pretty big campaign fires between now and the end of the year. So we'll clear off of this. Once we get service, we'll let the guys know that we're back available and we will be on to the next one.
All right, so we're back in the San Fernando Valley. Uh, LAFD uh, battalion chief is here in front of us. As you can see to our right, we have one to two acres. We've got high winds and it's backing down the canyon. So uh, I want to get a shot further back here with the, uh, with the houses and everything, with the fire over the top of the houses. Gives you a little bit of pers uh, perspective and scale. The winds are just horrendous. So uh, I'm probably going to shoot low on the sticks and then just uh, zoom in. But they're going to have to get helicopters on this. It's going to be a big, uh, big thing. But yeah, it's just one. Uh, Two acres going. I Looks like they're trying to do some drops on it. Let's get down to where the uh, to where the uh, command post vehicle is. But it's uh, it's backing down the hill, and I uh, if they uh, 536. It's just two acres backing down the hill here, and they're they're going to start doing water drops. So I I don't think it's going to go anywhere. I'm going to get some shots of water drops, and then I'll be uh, I'll be clearing. I I don't think that's going to really go crazy here. Roger, Dozer 41. We'll see. Dozer 45 and heavy equipment too. Alrighty. That's correct. The wind is just unbelievable. Yeah, it's cold. All right. Let's see if I can even get some shots over here with the uh, with the winds. Get a couple water drops, and uh, I mean, you can see how windy it is. The the streets, uh, road closure signs here are just going nuts. So we should be getting a, uh, a pretty decent water drop right now, and then we'll uh, and then we'll go from there. shot but all the wind god you can hear it on those buildings up there all the wind took the water and sent it off to the side so hopefully uh hopefully they can spot them a little bit and and have them drop have them drop a little bit further up on the uh, top of the fire but it is it is back burning currently Hey, it's only two acres. It's probably, it's going on three right now and it's definitely back burning, but it's got to go downhill and they're already putting water on it. So I'll let you know if, if they start getting a handle on it. Uh, give me another uh, 15, I'll call and check in with you. All right, see ya. 
So the good thing though, the good thing though, even though that water missed the fire a little bit and blew downwind, which again, we're back burning. So uh, back burning on a fire means it's going downhill and it's really hard for fire to go downhill. We have another drop coming in, I think right now, but yeah, going downhill is uh, very, very difficult for the fire, but with winds like this, you know, anything's, anything's possible. You can see the, water away. It, the water's just blowing away. So either they're gonna have to go a little bit lower and come in and give it a little bit of momentum, or I'm not I'm not sure what they're gonna do honestly. But they'll, they've already got ground crews in route. All right, one more drop and then uh, I'm good. <clears throat> they're getting it. Uh, we'll check that when we get back. Uh, Tay, I don't know if you guys can hear her. She's asking what the, what my estimation of the wind speeds are. Uh, the real factor here is the gusts. Uh, constant, the winds aren't super constant. They're just, they're gusting really powerfully. But you can see that the change in the condition, the fire condition from when we first got here. Um, if I had to guess, I'd say the highest gust that we've seen just now kind of knocked me off my feet. Usually, usually it takes at least 35 40 mile an hour winds, so just we're standing right here. But again, we have weather, uh, there's weather stations all around us, so we'll tap into that and we'll take a look at some of these winds and we'll actually put that into the story. That is, of course, a factor. Interestingly enough, we were talking about this on the fire that we were heading to earlier. The winds are really what drives these things. I can't stress that enough. So uh, LA City doing uh, water drops on this. The water, as you can see in the video, was dropping and then, and then the wind was just catching it and carrying it down uh, downhill but again uh, we have a lot of things in our favor right now number one is that the wind direction is in a south westerly direction and that's actually back burning down a hill and there is a fire road that city is establishing a pretty substantial line on so they've got water tenders up there all sorts of engines uh, and hand crews as well so they're going to work really hard they've got the bulk of the fire down it's just those little embers that's really what they've got to look out for if they can get those embers taken care of uh, then we're gonna be in a good position here on this fire and this isn't gonna go anywhere. But uh, again, really dangerous uh, situation for these guys with the fires, because again, the embers can jump behind you and the next thing you know, you look back and you go, oh my goodness, we're surrounded in fire. So really sketchy stuff. We're gonna get one more water drop, uh, maybe shoot a uh, street sign or two, if there even is one over here, and then we're gonna clear off back down uh, into the valley. on a vehicle versus, it's gonna be a vehicle versus pedestrian call, uh, and it's gonna be a fatality, but it does look like the vehicle stayed at scene, unless it's just a witness. If there's damage on the front of this car, is the front of that car damaged? Negative. Negative, okay. If the front of the car is not damaged, then that's uh, that's a different story. We might have a hit and run fatality here. So let's talk with uh, let's talk with fire and see what we got.
All right, so the big question right now is whether or not it's a hit and run. This car, I'm guessing, is a witness. Hey, Cap. Hey. Uh, hit and run, I presume? Yeah. yeah. I thought the, I was hoping that car stopped that was uh, further down, but I guess uh, they're a witness. Just people stopped uh, who saw car there. So this guy said he saw it over here. Okay. So just wait for me to get some more information. Okay. We'll get some more info. No, it's all good. I'll hang tight. Uh, it was a male or female? Uh, I'm not sure. I can't tell you. Okay. I can't tell based on the, the impact, to be honest with you. Got it. Okay. No worries, Cap. I'll get some shots. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, sir. I'm always I'm always amazed when uh, when they're left like that. So stupid. All right, per uh, per LAFD, uh, it is going to be a hit and run. The vehicle that's parked behind my vehicle is uh, potentially a witness. We have LAFD putting up their tape. We're going to go back a little bit further. We don't want. We don't want any graphic details here. We just kind of want to show where the victim was at the time. And I mentioned to him, you know, this is a, it's just so stupid. This, this is something that happens on a nightly basis for us and on a, uh, of course, a daily basis for the city. Um, we have so many vehicle versus pedestrian incidents. It's actually, uh, it's actually mind boggling. I, I don't understand, I've, I don't think I ever will. I, you know, I've talked about it before and we've got, uh, we got guys rolling up here, so let me get a couple shots here. It's all good. Uh, vehicle versus pedestrian, possibly a hit and run. I gotta talk to LAPD and see what's up. But yeah, it's um, every day. Yeah, <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. So they're requesting additional units for traffic control. Um, but like I was saying a second ago, just to continue on that uh, on that topic, this is just such a common thing in the city. And, and I've spoken with a lot of officers, a lot of uh, a lot of firefighters, and most of these situations are not are not something that. How do I explain this? If you hit a pedestrian unfortunately and they are injured or killed or what have you and you stay that is an accident right that's a car accident but if you hit someone in the roadway and you critically injure them or what have you and then you leave them to die in the roadway it's uh it's a horrendous absolutely horrendous way to go and uh talking with the captain he couldn't tell me if it was male or female because of how bad the head trauma was i mean that's a that's a pretty horrific situation 
Uh, you know, it's hard to say. I mean, there's clothing here. Once the uh, once the RA moves, they'll have to finish some of their paperwork and they'll take off. But once they do, we'll get a better, a little bit of better uh, picture of what's going on. But Van Nuys, I mean, it's a huge uh, street out here. It's actually much wider than the average street uh, in the valley because there are all these car dealerships out here. And these uh, these dealerships, they during the day you can see they have uh, the car carriers unloading cars and loading cars like crazy. So. Um, they have all this extra room, but you know, to have a street that th that's this well lit right underneath the street light, I mean, it's even when the ambulance leaves and they take their floodlights with them, this is a very, uh, very well lit part of the valley. So there's there's not uh, not too many excuses here uh, as for as for why this uh, as for why this unfolded. But again, it's really it's up to these people that are involved in these incidents to determine what they do after the collision, and that's really the the problem most of the time. I think you're right. I think they were dragged quite a ways, actually, from way down way down at the next uh, intersection. I was at the gas station just buying something to eat and then I'm um, going behind the, the gas station into the alley to go to Calvert. As I'm leaving, into, passing the gate, I hear this large, you know, crash. I assume there was two cars and as I'm going back, I'm going to Van Nuys Boulevard, I see his homeless friends on the sidewalk and I see a bike bending in half. And then I asked him, Where's, what the hell, where's the body? And there, was, there was even a car that passed by and said, hey, what happened? And they said that the guy is being dragged out of the car. And as I looked from far, it was a red, reddish Camry or Corolla 90s version. And I saw him turn right. And I'm like, what the fuck? And I'm all like, I'm gonna go. He's going where I live. And maybe I'll see, you know, the body, see if he's still alive or something. You know, because from far, I did see something being dragged. Because he kept stopping and pausing, stopping, and pausing. He turned to the right, trying to get away. So as I'm going down Calvary, I see the car pass by. Uh, from Vesper all the way to Delano. I'm sure he went to Delano and then back out to Van Nuys Boulevard, driving all the way back, most likely doing a U-turn because I don't know how the hell it landed over here on the left side when he was on the right side. So he must have gone away this way. And uh, yeah, I, I went back. When I went home, I went back and uh, I got my jacket on and came back just to see if any, anyone called the cops or something. And no, uh, but as I was standing there, I saw the ambulance coming this way. I'm like, oh shit, so it must be over here. So I, I ran it from down here, hoping that, you know, poor guy might be alive because I usually feed the homeless out here. But uh, it's possibly someone I know as well because I know some of the people that live over there. What was, what was your reaction when you saw it? I don't know, man. I, I've seen a lot of people go. You know, I just, it hurts you. That shit, it's never goes away and it's very familiar. And especially when someone you don't even know, you know, and you got nothing to, out here has to go like this. It's very sad, you know. So. Did you see what kind of car it was? Yeah, it was a 90s version Camry or Corolla. And most likely, because there's a lot of fucking trucks around here. A lot of drunks out here. And I'm sure it was, uh, you know, a drunk guy that hit him. Because uh, he didn't stop. He kept going. He didn't stop. So we just got a uh, quick interview with that witness. And LAPD, we're overhearing a little bit of chatter. They're confirming that this incident started at Calvert and Van Nuys, which I believe is quite a ways to the north. So we're going to try and find that exact location. My only... Uh, my only question with this is there's a it, it has to be north yeah because there's a skid mark going down uh going down the street here um which is we're gonna we're gonna measure it out and see what that distance is but i mean this is probably about a mile that this person was dragged under the car they're saying it's a male and uh we overheard one of the officers saying that the uh the victim no longer has a face attached to their rest of their body so we're gonna go try and find exactly where this all started and we'll uh we'll pick up from there so 
So this is apparently the, uh, this is the initial location where they think this uh, all began. So our victim was dragged. Drug, I guess. You, drug, right? Dragged, drug. It's dragged. Uh, all the way from here down to what was it, Burbank? They did a U-turn. Body got dislodged from the vehicle, and then the suspect vehicle took off. So pretty, uh, pretty horrific ordeal for for our victim. There's a long ways to go. Hey Sarge. Yeah. How do we know it started here? Uh, just uh, evidence. Physical evidence? Yeah. This over here, or? I'm not seeing anything obvious like shoes or the usual. Just ground markings. God. That's a long way to go. Yeah, at least a quarter mile. Valley traffic's handling? They will be, yes. Thank you, sir. So yeah, they, they're saying that there's uh, ground markings here that indicate uh, that this is where our victim was struck initially. You can see there's, it's very faint. I'll try to pick it up. We could see it earlier, the, the, the track marks in the roadway from the, uh, I'm trying to think of a way to describe this without being too graphic and also being insensitive. That's kind of the, the fine line here. Um, in the roadway, you can see pieces of our victim that are being ground into the, into the asphalt. You can tell by the color and the, uh, some of the shapes. It's not a piece of car, it's a piece of person. So really uh, just a horrific way to go. Really drawn out and um, incredibly painful. So I'm, I'm uh, it's tough when you see stuff like that. It's, it's always, uh, always tough. But um, they've got all of Van Nuys closed. This is about a, I'd say about three quarters of a mile between us and where the suspect vehicle made a U-turn. Uh, and the victim was then dislodged from the, uh, from the underside of the vehicle. So normally pedestrians don't get uh, dragged underneath. Usually they're bounced out. Um, we actually just talked about this recently regarding the limousine case, the drug deal gone bad on Skid Row back in 2009. That was a really interesting one, but that was uh, actually, you have some footage, I think, that you have on that. Do you want to, do you want to cut to that now? Kind of talking about that type of incident? Yeah. Okay. Let's, Alex, let's roll. Um, Tay was doing an edit about the vehicle versus pedestrian, the limousine homicide investigation with a woman that was dragged underneath a limousine in downtown LA. Very similar to this, actually more graphic than this one, but uh, similar circumstances. Let's take a look at that. Hey everyone, we're here in downtown LA. We're actually on Skid Row. Um, this is Fifth Street. The next major is Los Angeles. We're gonna go over a little bit of a, uh, a story, uh, an incident that occurred here back in 2009 uh, involving a drug deal gone wrong and actually one of my first national stories. So let's go through a little bit of uh, the incident and what transpired here back in 2009.
So the date was early December 2009. Uh, the time of call was approximately 2 a.m. Again, here uh, just near the intersection of 5th and Los Angeles, there was a dispute between two women. There was a, um, a woman who was uh, purchasing narcotics and a woman who was selling narcotics. Um, they were approximately a mile away from where we're standing now at, uh, again, at 5th and LA. There was some type of drug deal that went on between them. The, one of the females left the scene uh, of the drug deal uh, in a limousine, strangely enough. Uh, old limousine, probably 19, I want to say 1980s, uh, very, very old model limo. Left the drug deal location, wherever that may have occurred, further to the uh, south of where we are now. Um, came back around, wasn't happy apparently with the product uh, that was, uh, that was uh, sold and, uh, and received by our uh, suspect. The, uh, again, female suspect came up, ended up uh, finding the, uh, the drug dealer, the other female that's involved in this incident. She then struck her with the limousine, but instead of normally the victim, you know, we see in vehicle versus pedestrian all the time, the victims get thrown over the top or they get dragged underneath the car or rolled underneath the car and then spit out. Uh, this victim in this case um, ended up getting stuck under the front left wheel of the limousine and I don't know if that's because the limo is a longer uh, longer frame longer bodied uh, vehicle if it wasn't able to maybe uh, mechanically just get over the victim's body but either way the, the victim's body got stuck partially in the wheel well but the majority of her body was stuck underneath the uh, the wheel and the wheel locked on her um, the vic or sorry the suspect then proceeded to drive almost a mile here in downtown with pieces of the victim uh, detaching from the uh, from their body um, they actually drove past Central Station which is one block uh, one block to our east and one block to the south Central Station front uh, lobby there was an officer there I'll never forget hearing him on the radio just screaming because he had the woman driving by with the body under the car and he saw that firsthand so that poor guy um, the vehicle drove by Central Station there were units in the area they came up and they affected the traffic stop right where we're standing uh, literally mid-block uh, just between LA and uh, the next street over is Maple. So we're between LA and Maple, uh, mid-block. This is where the limo came to rest. Where my car is stopped right now is approximately where that, where that victim was uh, pronounced. I was on the corner uh, right behind you guys to the left. And you'll see in the footage, um, Tay's gonna play it here in a second, you'll see from the footage that right where my car is is exactly where where that victim was pronounced. LAFD did uh, respond. They came out from Station 9, I believe it was. Um, they came out and they uh, subsequently pronounced the victim deceased at scene. One of the interesting parts of this story is that the airship actually had to respond out and, and backtrack the debris field to locate the pieces of her through the streets of Skid Row, which is pretty, pretty horrendous to say the least. This is exactly where uh, where I stood when we got here, there was um, crime scene tape was already established across the entire street. Uh, I actually parked on the south side. We're here on the north side. But if you look back eastbound, you can see where uh, where the car is parked, and you can see that's approximately where where LAPD stopped the suspect vehicle. We'll take a walk down here, which we weren't able to do at the time, of course. But um, the the border pretty much between Skid Row and not Skid Row is going to be Los Angeles, which is the street right here. LAPD took the suspect out of the uh, of the vehicle, and you'll see uh, in the video that she was talking to them. I want to say right about right about this spot, um, she was talking with those uh, with those officers, and then clearly she had a view of of what had transpired um, in front of her car and underneath her car. Um, LAPD then took her over here, was talking with her, and that's when she. Uh, that's when she subsequently collapsed in the, uh, on the sidewalk. Uh, LAFD ended up talking with her after that occurred, and uh, that's when they made the determination that she needed to be transported to a hospital. So again, kind of bizarre that the ambulance that showed up for our victim underneath the vehicle ends up taking the suspect. I thought that was kind of strange, but um, that's pretty much the run through, pretty, pretty basic stuff. But again, LAPD uh, Central Division is right there. It's that, uh, that brick building right, right behind me. And that's where the uh, desk officer, because calls are being generated, of course, um, but that's where the desk officer actually saw 
the uh, the suspect vehicle with the body attached to the front driving uh, through Skid Row in front of the station. Uh, that's when the radio call was generated, and that's uh, shortly after that is when the uh, when the officers made contact with the uh, victim, or sorry, with the suspect. Yes, sir. By any chance, do you know what color was the bike? You know, um, I never saw a bicycle. I walked, uh, we drove and walked the whole thing. I just saw the, the body, but I never saw a bicycle. What did he look like? Um, was like, he dark skin? His face was ground into the asphalt. It was gone. So I couldn't tell you. Was he a short guy? A smaller guy, yeah. But like pants, a beanie maybe? A I, nothing, man. He was, he was dragged under a car from here all the way down there. It's, you know, the human body doesn't do well with stuff like that. Uh, yeah, it's it's. I haven't seen uh, I haven't seen like one like this in about 15 years. So it's been a long time. People are people are heartless. But there's so many cameras out here. They'll they'll I just, find. I just feel like I'm. I, it's it's one of my, my one of my one of my group. One of my little friends. Somebody that you know. Somebody like. I'm like their older friend, you know, I'm like their big homie. Don't stress out yet until, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. don't worry if it's, he could be, your friend could be home asleep. You know what I'm saying? Don't, don't worry until you have to worry. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. It's all good. It's all good. But yeah, I, I, that's all, that's all I know. He was dragged from uh, some, somewhere between here and Calvert is where he was hit. And then the car continued southbound to Burbank, made a U-turn, and then that's where the body was dislodged at that point. That's all, that's pretty much all I know. I don't fucking believe that, man. <sighs> Happens every day in the city. People get run over. So, I hope it's not your friend. Have a good night. Thank you, sir. God bless you. You too. Thank you. So, again, this is not a... Again, people get hit by cars all the time in the city. We talk about it fairly regularly. Um, of course, the factors involved in that are horrendous, absolutely horrendous. We had a gentleman come up to us just now. He was concerned that the uh, deceased victim might be a friend of his, and he's very distraught. I hope it isn't a friend of his. I hope that um, it's someone he, uh, you know, not the person he's concerned about. But um, looking back to that incident in 2009, I know it's a little bit of a time warp, but now we're back here. Um, incidents where people get stuck and then dragged under the car like that, really, really rare. I, I don't see it very often. Um, seeing this again with that much time between them is bizarre, um, but at the same time, it does, um, it clearly does happen. Um, if that person had done the right thing, and we don't know, they could be drunk, they could be under the influence of a whole myriad of, of other substances um, but if that individual had hit that our victim and then stopped then there could have been a chance that they could survive uh, that ordeal but once they get stuck under the car and dragged for about just looking at the map right now I just asked rough estimation three quarters up to a mile because uh, they did a u-turn doubled back um, the human body doesn't do too well with that. So any chance of them surviving just completely out the window. Not to mention they then leave them in the street after what they did to them. I mean, it's, it's pretty, when it comes to vehicle versus pedestrian, this is probably, probably as bad as it gets. So we will be clearing out of here. We've got everything we need to tell the story and we will be on to the next one.
So we're heading to a classic LA thing. And this may sound a little crazy if you're not from California, but if you see a burning palm tree, a palm tree on fire, that's like, <laughs> that's like a rite of passage for, uh, for any Angelino. Um, I don't know why it is that way, but it's always been like that, I guess. There's, there's a show that talks about it. What is it? Does, is it you? They talk about the burning palm tree? Yeah. Okay. So, um, yes, it's, it's quite a thing in the city. Um, if you see a burning palm tree, you're now officially an Angelino. So uh, there's quite a loom up here in front of us. I'm hearing that it is palm trees on fire. Um, Gabriel's already there. So even if we show up a little bit too late for you guys to see it on Tay's camera, um, you should be able to see it on Gabe's footage. So let's go take a look. But the burning palm trees are quite the, uh, quite the rite of passage out here. Gabe says it's on the on-ramp. And it looks like they're running out of water. And I still see the glow. Oh, you guys get to see it. Look at this. Look at this. Yes, the the palm trees ablaze. We were just We were just here. Yeah, we were here for the art. Uh, if you guys remember the art crash at Sherman Way Northbound, that was right uh, that was right here. Roger, yeah, look at that. Is that. It's beautiful, though, I have to say. It's really, it's. I know it's destructive, and it's, I mean, but look at this, huh? Roger. Where's, uh, oh, you know what? We can go right here. Where's, uh, Gabe's over here somewhere. He's over here somewhere. Let's, uh, let's see if we can go find him. Oh, he's at the top of the ramp with DOT. There he is. <laughs> There's Gabe. <laughs> nice. They're, uh, yeah, they're asking for the ramp to be closed. So let's see what, uh, oh, wow, look at that. That's cool. That is cool. Stopping on the wrong side of the road to look at it. Not so cool, but pretty cool nonetheless. Yeah, Gabe's got, uh, Gabe's got a beautiful shot of what's going on. So let's go over and see what he's got. And then once we, we'll get out and talk with him and then we'll roll, uh, we'll take a look at his footage because uh, his shot is probably gonna be really, really pretty. But yeah, total rite of passage for Angelinos. I don't know why that became a thing, but uh, it is, <laughs> it is a thing. Sorry, I was just checking the radio. No, it's you. Tell tell everybody what's going on. I didn't want to interrupt. Oh. Oh, there you go. I already got that. Okay. Tell them what's going on. Talk. I'm good. <laughs> Hi, hello. Talk to them. Hey, so we got some, uh, a couple of palm trees on fire. I was on my way home. The call went out. Usually when palm trees go, they either burn at the bottom or make their way up. And as, uh, as it looks from this, they, uh, they, they just all went up. So... We were talking about how the burning palm tree is like a right as a native Californian. You have to see it at least once in your life. Without, have you heard that or no? No, oh, I haven't. You never heard that? Oh, wow. Well, I guess it's just us in that show. I'm done. It was ripping when I pulled up. So Gabe's saying that it was going really, uh, the fire was going pretty heavy when he got here. We're going to, uh, Alex, if you could, let's roll uh, Gabe's footage when he arrived before, shortly before we got here. Let's take a look. All right, back out here at the 170. Again, Gabe's got the shot. We had a crazy night tonight. Uh, thank you guys again for riding with us here on Code 20. Again, new episode every Friday right here on YouTube. Again, we appreciate you guys 
supporting us. Um, I know we had some time off, but again, we're back at it every single Friday, again, right here on YouTube. Members, thank you guys for supporting us, subscribers as well. And if you're just in to check it out and see what we do, again, thank you guys as well. So we'll see you next week. Thank you.